Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education, Cooperative Learning. Now, let's begin with the question of why should educators use cooperative learning in the classroom? Teachers should not come to class with the same lesson plans each and every day. Change things up. Allow students to hear a voice of someone different. Allow them to hear the voice of their peers. This way, students get a break from boring teacher lectures. Cooperative learning is a great strategy because it's all about the students and their own thoughts and ideas. The students are actually the center of learning, not the teacher. As teachers, we have a responsibility to prepare students for most careers which happen to require people to work in groups with others. Cooperative learning is a key component of 21st century life skills. Ultimately, we are smarter together as a group than we are apart as individuals. A common question is how do we group students for cooperative learning? It is best to group students deliberately and the first thing to consider when grouping students are their academic abilities and their test scores. So consider grouping students by performance level, homogeneous grouping for students with similar performance levels and heterogeneous grouping for different performance levels. Student safety is always the number one priority. Avoid bullying situations. Therefore, consider grouping students for harmonious and safe environments. Another possibility for grouping is a random approach. In that case, there is no particular rhyme or reason for placing any one student in a group as opposed to placing them in another group. Random grouping is sometimes used when teachers are looking to shake things up. When students are grouped together, things can get out of control pretty quickly. To keep order, assign students specific roles within the group, therefore assigning responsibilities to its members. Always remember, the best grouping scenario is one where students are both safe and learning. Now it's time to look at some classroom examples for our teachers. It should be noted that there are many different strategies. The first strategy is think, pair, share. Students are first given a question to work on. Then they are grouped into pairs. Once grouped, they can compare answers and discuss their different perspectives. Sometimes they are asked to come up with a single answer and then share that answer with the entire class. The Jigsaw Learning Model Students are assigned into different groups. The first group they are assigned to is the home group. Each student is given a different topic to study. That student joins other students with the same topic, the expert group and shares ideas on that topic. Lastly, students come back to the home group and share what they learned from the expert group. There are many different project-based learning examples that allow students to work in groups and solve different real-world problems. Project-based learning should be aligned to standards and based around a driving inquiry question. Before we finish, let's consider some cautions and dangers for cooperative learning. First off, whenever students are placed in groups, there's a tendency to talk. Students will have conversations because students tend to socialize when given a chance. So teachers must be vigilant and keep a close eye on students. Also, group sizes should be no larger than three to four students. The large number of students placed in the group, the less work that gets done. In psychology, it's called the Ringelman effect. For cooperative learning to work efficiently, require submission of student work. Make sure these lessons have learning goals and objectives that students must meet. Lastly, because cooperative learning is group work, some students will look to take advantage of that and do little to no work and allow their peers to do all the work. As a teacher, you must ensure individual accountability to each student. Right now, I wanna say thank you for your time and remember to subscribe to this channel.